Moving on to a rate of change example. A ball is thrown and its height in meters after t seconds is modeled by h of t equals negative 1 over 4 t squared plus t plus 3. And we have to answer a series of three questions with that scenario. What is the average velocity during the third second? What is the velocity at the third second? And what is the velocity when the ball hits the ground? So starting off with the first question, what is the average velocity during the third second? Now wording wise, it's a little bit perhaps confusing because they're asking for the average velocity and we know that when they're asking average velocity, it has to be between two points, it's the slope of the secant line. But they're saying during the third second, so it's almost like they're giving you only one point in time. But the key in this whole question is the word during. So it's during the third second, it's not at the third second. So because it's during the third second, there's a period of time there between two points for which we can find the average velocity of. And here's what I mean by that in a diagram. So a ball is thrown at zero seconds and then it travels in the air for one second and then it travels for the second second and then it travels for the third second. So the third second represents this period of time here between these two points at a t value of 2 and a t value of 3. So we're finding the average velocity between t values 2 and 3. But those are only the independent variables. We have to also find what the dependent variables will be. So we have to find h of 2. So we would just plug in 2 for t in this equation. And when we do that, we would get 4. And we have to plug in 3 for the equation to find the dependent variable for that t value of 3. So plugging in 3 into the equation uh, for t, we would get 3.75. And so to find the average velocity, we would just find the slope of the line between those two points. So we would take h of 3 minus h of 2 all over 3 minus 2. And h of 3 is 3.75. h of 2 is 4. And then 3 minus 2 is just 1. So you would get negative 0.25 meters per second. Don't forget the units. The rate of change is always the change in the dependent variable, which is uh, the height, which is measured in meters in this case, per one unit change in the independent variable. And the independent variable is time, and it's measured in seconds. So negative 0.25 meters per second represents the average velocity during the third second. Now, one more thing I want to discuss is why it's negative. Well, a ball is thrown in the air and it's modeled by a parabola that's opening down because of that negative a value. So the parabola is going to look something like this. So because that average velocity is negative, then we know that during the third second, on average, the ball is on its way back down to the ground because if it's going back down to the ground, then it is losing height, meaning that the height is going down with every second. So that's all that means, that during the third second, on average, the ball is on its way down. If it was on its way up, then the uh, average velocity would be positive. Next question, what is the velocity at the third second? So in contrast to the question before, notice here how they're asking for the velocity at a specific point in time, at the third second, so we know we're finding the instantaneous rate of change. And to find the instantaneous rate of change, we're gonna have to find the limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient. And as we've been doing in slope of tangent videos, there are two ways to do it. You can either do it this way, where we put that specific t value of 3 in for a and then do the algebra on this and get the speed or the velocity at the third second right away or we get a general slope equation or a general velocity equation for uh, this function here at a general x value of a or a t value of a and then 
plug in 3 for that general equation. Now, what I would suggest doing, because there's a part C to this question where they're also asking for the velocity when it hits the ground, I would find the general slope or the general velocity equation instead of finding the specific speed at time 3. Because then we can use that general equation again in part C. Now technically this difference quotient here for this specific question should be in terms of H and not F. So there should be like an H in front here because the function is uh, the height in terms of time. However, I'm going to keep this F here because I don't want you getting confused with this H and then this H here. They're both different. This H, if we were to put it here, would just uh, represent this function, which is the height, and then this H here is just part of the difference quotient, and they're two different H's, so I don't want to put the same variable. So I'll just keep this as F here, but technically it should be A uh, or h of a plus h and h of a. So just be aware of that. So then moving on with the difference quotient, f of a plus h is represented by this first square bracket here. So I just took a plus h and plugged it in for all the t values. So we end up with this expression in the first bracket minus f of a. And f of a is represented in this second square bracket. And that is just when I plugged in A for T. And then this is still all over H. So then further simplifying the numerator, this A plus H squared, we would FOIL it out, end up with this expression in the brackets. And then we would distribute this negative inside the second bracket to get this further simplified numerator. And now all we have to do is distribute it, this negative 1 over 4 inside this bracket. And then when we do that, when we distribute that negative 1 over 4 in, a bunch of things will cancel out in the numerator. So these 3's will cancel out, these A's will cancel out, and then also this uh, negative 1 over 4 A squared and this positive 1 over 4 A squared will cancel out. And we'll just be left with negative 1 over 2 A H minus 1 over 4 H squared plus H in the numerator all over H. And then notice how each term in the numerator contains an H, so we can factor an H out. Now the H's cancel out, and now we can plug in 0 for H because that H in the denominator is gone. So when we plug in 0 for H in this remaining expression in the brackets, this middle term here, this negative 1 over 4H, would go to 0. And we would just be left with a general equation for the velocity of this function as negative 1 over 2a plus 1. So that there represents the general velocity equation for any t value a. So if we want to find the velocity at a time value of 1, just plug in 1 for a. If we want to find it at 2, we could plug in 2 for a. In this case, in this question, we want to find it at the third second, so we would plug in 3 for a. So when t is equal to 3, the velocity would equal, plugging in 3 for a here, so negative 1 half times 3, that is negative 1.5, and then negative 1.5 plus 1 would give us negative 0.5 meters per second. And don't forget those units. We're dealing with rate of change. So the velocity at a time value of 3 is negative 0.5 meters per second. And the reason why it's negative is because at 3 seconds that means that the ball is already going down towards the ground. It is losing height, hence why it's negative. So that's your final answer. The biggest takeaway from this part in the question is how I mentioned before you had the two um, different choices to use to find this speed of negative 0.5. We could have used a specific t value of 3 or we could have found a general equation like we did here and then plugged in 3 for a. So it's better to find the general equation because now we can use this in part c. And our final question, what is the velocity when the ball hits the ground? So we can use that velocity equation that we found in part b of negative 1 half times a plus 1 for any t value a. 
but all we have to find is when the ball actually hits the ground. So we have to find this T value here. So how would we do that? Well, when the ball hits the ground, we know that the height is going to be zero. So we can plug in zero for H in our equation and then solve for T. So we'd have zero equals negative one over four T squared plus T plus three. This is a quadratic equation. A couple of ways to do this. You could put in the quadratic formula, but I think it will also factor smoothly. So if we take out this negative one over four, we would be left with t squared minus 4t minus 12, right? Because there's like this one in front of the t here. So one divided by negative one over four because we factored it out is negative four. And then three divided by negative one over four is negative 12. And then this remaining bracket here factors smoothly into t minus six and t plus two. And this is still all equal to zero, so we know that our answers are t equals six and t equals negative two. However, time can't be negative, so we would just ignore that. That would be over here, and time can't be to the left of this h-axis. So t equals six, we know that that is when the ball hits the ground. So now we can just simply take that t value of six and plug it into the velocity equation. So we'd have negative one over two times six plus one. So we'd have negative three plus one, which gives us negative two meters per second. So when the ball hits the ground at a time value of six, the ball is traveling at negative two meters per second. Now, another way you could have solved this question if you didn't have this general velocity formula that you found in part B is you could have found the specific velocity by using the difference quotient at a specific time value of six. So you would still have to do this part here, finding when the ball hits the ground, and then you would just use the difference quotient. However, that's gonna be a lot of algebra again. You can maybe do it for practice, and you should still get this negative two meters per second at the end. But as I suggested, find that general velocity equation in part B, and then we can use that in part B and part C, and it makes our life a lot more easy. We get this uh, same velocity with a lot less work, but uh, it's your choice in the end. Overall, not too bad of a question. Couple of tricks with part A, the whole during thing, during the third second, you have to find it uh, between time values two and three seconds. Part B was pretty simple, it was just instantaneous rate of change at three seconds. And then part C, the only complex part was finding when the ball hits the ground. And it was at a time value of six, and we did that with factoring. You could have also did the quadratic equation, and then take that time value of six and find the instantaneous rate of change for this function at a t value of six. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.